So Cicerones, we're not judges. We're not out there to say this beer's good, this beer's bad. We are welcome to have opinions, but know when you are allowed to share your opinions and we should just shut up. Further south, that did not help. <laughs> Don't be judgy. These are perfect beers. They know exactly how they want to brew these beers, and they're seizing a market opportunity. Let's talk about the myth here. IPA is high ABV and highly hopped, which made it arrive in better condition than other beers. It did have high alcohol and hops, and those did help keep it clean. So that's all legit. However, there were strong porters, strong stouts. Uh, and even small beers that would arrive in good condition as well. One of these is a German Pils and one of these is a Czech style Pilsner, otherwise known as a Czech premium pale lager. Czech lager yeast doesn't break down all that diacetyl. So if you get diacetyl in one of these beers, that's a telltale sign for the Czech style. German lager, they would never let you taste diacetyl. However, uh, you may get some DMS, it's coming from the malt, but overall the, the lager yeast leaves a clean, neutral tasting beer. And when you know why the differences are there, it's fun. If you just say, ah, oh, they're both light-colored, easy-drinking lagers, it's like, yeah, they are. But they have different complexity, and you can taste the regionality in there. These guys are really easy to confuse, triple and Belgian golden strong. The big thing is that the triple tends to be a little bit more malty softness and fruit ripeness. These guys, slightly more hop character, so they lean more hard, and the fruit isn't as ripe. What sounds softer and, and plusher, that green banana or the brown banana? Brown banana. So this is the brown banana. This is the green banana. What would you rather eat? A lime or a, a navel orange? Yeah, so navel orange, fruit ripeness and softness. This is the lime over here, the hard, more intense stuff. So the great sparkler debate. Southern England, they're very anti-sparkler because sparklers create foam. And so that means that they have an ounce less beer in them. This is a terrible pour if you go to a pub in London because they'd say, what the hell? Where's my beer? This is all foam. Checking for glasses or beer clean with beer. This is this is like a spectator sport. All right, is this clean? Yes. It's almost empty, which is a problem, but yeah, that's definitely clean because there are even rings of foam in there, leftover foam that are clinging to the glass. This guy is way too common and I think just disgusting. So where you see bubbles adhering to the inside of the glass means it's not beer clean. That's pretty common, unfortunately. I'm sort of a stickler about this because I'm a brewer and I don't want you to think that high fermentation, low fermentation, or top fermenting, bottom fermenting is actually accurate. It's not accurate because the yeasts are so evenly mixed throughout the entire column of beer during fermentation that it's, it's irrelevant to call them high or low or top or bottom. However, it's really talking about how the old school way of harvesting the yeast occurred. It's made with raw meat, <laughs> raw meat, whoops, raw wheat. <laughs>